What's up? Dean from Powerhouse Miniatures. How you doing? This is a video miniature painting tutorial on Space Wolves Lino APC. I sound like I've got a speech impediment sometimes, honestly. Rhino. Space Marine Rhino APC. So these are just the two halves of a Space Wolves Rhino. Basically, they've been undercoated in Army Paint and Colour Primer, the uh, Wolf Grey, which is this one. This is the uh, War, war Paint Colour Match, basically, 100% match, the uh, Wolf Grey. Going to be using an airbrush to highlight with Wolf Grey again, but uh, from Vallejo Gamer. So same name, different colour, obviously they're completely different colours as you can see. So I'm going to be doing that and then a side by side comparison of the Wolf Grey mixed with a bit of the Dead White from uh, Vallejo Gamer. So that's pretty much it. Um, I've got a pair of gloves on this time but I'm not wearing a mask because uh, before when I did a test and I couldn't, you couldn't hear my voice um, properly when I was doing it. So I'm just using the inside of a box, it's like a Bretonian Battle Force box, it's the airbrush booth and as always got my Harder and Steambeck Ultra. So that's pretty much it. I've gone about 30 psi at the moment. Uh, let's see what we've got there. Now, yeah, 30 psi with my uh, with my compressor. So we're going to do that, right? So basically, the idea is I want roughly the top half of the thing highlighted. So I'm going to pick up um, the top edge of this bit, top bit of there, this bit, the top of the. Uh, engine turret parts, the top of this hatch, shit like that and then you can see roughly what's going on so I'm making sure that that is focused in, you'll be able to see, so I'm going at like this sort of an angle uh, what, two or three inches away So that's the ba the basic idea. I'm just going to move the light so you can see it because obviously it's white, white background, white paint, white light, and all the rest. So hopefully you get a good idea of what I've, what what we're doing sort of thing. And uh, from the side, we've got a pretty nice fade already. Um, so I'm just going to strengthen it off on this one side, and then across this middle bit um, of the door, we're going to go through and sort of widen that down. Oh, there you go. So again, for that one, I went from like this sort of an angle. So then, as of my previous videos, instead of getting like a circle, you get a sort of, um, I don't know what shape it is. So yeah, the angle again, I'm gonna go like that. Same as always, you can add, but you can't easily take away. So that is pretty much it. Now, um, it's all personal style at the end of the day, um, and you can do it however you want. That's how I would, that's how I would do it. So, all together, super subtle, and I really, really like that. So I'm going to do the other one right quick, uh, and then I'll show you, like, mixed with white. So this is obviously the opposite side. Uh, so again, coming from two or three inches away, pressing the trigger about halfway down, uh, and I'm going for this section, this section, the top of the engine, the outside of the hatch, and then I'm going to extend it down a little bit to probably, like, the fourth finger, fourth foot rung down, the this armour section, the top edges of these two armour pieces here, like so. I'm going to turn it around. A little bit. Yeah. So again, you don't want it. You don't ever want to go on the full, the full trigger thing because you get too much paint. So if you get like halfway down, you've got like much more control. The color builds up much slower, and therefore you can really, uh, you can really get the color where you want it. So that's again pretty much pretty much about right. Uh, now I'm going to come in from this angle, from upside down, and then I want a bit more on the mi these middle middle parts. So again, from even further away and from like a 45 degree angle. Just a little blast. So that's pretty much it. 
um, on both of them. Again, dries really quick and everything like that. So that that is the effect. Now, altogether, I'm really pleased with that. It takes no time at all. And then it, just now, I'm going to show you how to do the. Uh, well, I'm going to show you how I would do some of the white um, mixed in with the Wolf Grey from Vallejo Gamer. So let's just check that's dry enough. So again, straight into the cup, I've still got uh, well a real small amount of the Wolf Grey. So I'm just going to do that. Uh, so probably 50-50 mix of the white and the grey at this point. I've got a brush here that I'm going to mix it in with. So I've got a selection of like the older brushes that I uh, that the tips go on. Then I use them for this sort of thing. So um, in fact, I'll just do it on the glove so you can see. Now that isn't spraying 100% right. If you see the circle, it should be a circle, and it isn't. Which means I may have a problem with the needle on my airbrush, and I didn't know that <laughs> until. I saw it just now, so that's not good, but oh well, that's what happens. So yeah, here we are. So in the same way that we did this corner, this corner, the top of the armor panel, the top of each engine section, we're gonna do the same thing again. Um move the lights around a little bit. We're gonna do the same thing again, but obviously painting within the paint that we did before. very gently and again from a couple of inches away about 25 to 30 psi and pulling the trigger down uh, less than half of its full um, uh, whatever the full amount you can pull it down there you go right super fast so that is it turn the compressor off uh, now side by side you can see where the white has come in um, more on the right where it just gives it a bit more of a, of, of a you know like a well makes it look like it lighter and for an actual space wolves thing I'm trying to get these lights correctly take it off and be able to see properly so the um, the white itself is quite subtle but it's too light for a uh, space wolf actual space wolf color so you can come back in and, and mix it back up with that or even like a little bit of brown across the bottom and you'd be uh, you'd be in business but that's pretty much it so to summarize basically you get some diluted paint 25 to 30 psi you come in at the correct angle which would be 45 degrees and two or three inches away you never use well you, you get an intuitive idea of it over time but obviously you never pull the trigger more than about halfway in um, and you slowly build it to so it slowly builds up the color as opposed to just being all at once uh, I will have to check out whether my airbrush is knackered or not because I'm sorry if it is <laughs> I didn't realise but the uh, the actual shape should be a circle and not some weird like bird different thing that's so I think I've knackered the needle or uh, it needs a good clean either are uh, possibilities so uh, yeah that's pretty much it so I think that's super pleasing and that takes no time at all so if you had a couple of tanks you could do them in 20-30 uh, minutes each get them all finished off um, edge highlight a bit of weathering and there you are so that's pretty much it I've got another video in a minute on so there's a side by side, hopefully you can see. Um, the white looks kind of nice on the left. Um, yeah, I've got a tutorial coming up just now on weathering. So I'm going to use these two bits and I'm going to do a few of the weathering techniques that I would uh, on some of the tanks, show them off, give you a good idea. Um, on my podcast this week, somebody asked whether you could do it without um, some of the pigments. So I'm going to do a little tutorial on, on that. So check that out. As always, Ian from Power House Miniatures. Thanks for watching.